Here in this secluded area, in a top secret, heavily fortified underground bunker, is where the leaders of the Muslim world are figuring out how to rescue the human race from the destructive Zionist entity. We start with missiles. They will retaliate. And kill innocent terrorists. The discussions are conducted in a spirit of brotherhood and togetherness. When any disagreements do arise, they are diffused through the conflict resolution methods for which Islamists are so well known. I kill you. I kill you more! Among other topics, the leaders are discussing how to continue utilizing the most effective and deadly weapon designed by Islam to date, the flotilla. At this hour, the women's flotilla is making its way to Gaza. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see the headlines. Uh, uh, the Jews beat women. But I heard that uh, some of the women may ask to stay in Israel. Why? Their husband beat them. Is this indeed the only reason that some of the women on board will betray Islam and request asylum in Israel? After delving a bit deeper, one discovers that there is another hidden motive behind this phenomenon. Their fathers beat them too. Get to the point. What's their problem? According to the plan being forged to show the world just how evil Israel really is, other flotillas will be dispatched in the near future, such as the one-year-old baby's flotilla and the endangered species flotilla. Finally, the Muslim world will unleash its doomsday weapon. The drug queen flotilla! <laughs> there are those in the West who claim that due to the struggle against the Zionist entity, Muslim leaders have been neglecting the welfare of their own people. It emerges, however, that they are perfectly capable of conducting other affairs simultaneously with little effort. Excuse me, hello? Yes, 300 is fine. You know what? Go for 500. I'm sure it will even go higher than that. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Stock market? Uh, no, dead Kurds. One of the most malicious accusations lodged by the West is that the courageous leaders of Islam fear confronting Israel in a real battle. However, war council discussions have led to daring ideas about which military method should be used to strike the so-called Jewish state. The Air Force, not the Israeli Air Force, you idiots, our Air Force. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah is undoubtedly one of the most prominent and respected figures in the Muslim world. His contribution to the debate is always met with great enthusiasm. The enemy can never defeat our faith. We shall pick up our knives, our clubs and pistols and rockets and shall cross the border and march to Jerusalem and Allah will give us the victory. Masala, when you finish your break, go make us some coffee. One sugar. One and a half, no cream. Contrary to popular belief, Islamic leaders are extremely modern, keenly aware of the power of public opinion and of the need to engage in activities that arouse international sympathy. How about blowing up some embassies? No, I can't do that. I'm a part of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> The most crucial issue for the leaders is the Palestinian problem. As a result, they are in the process of planning strategy for the struggle, including one that has been coined the Iranian solution. And finally, poof, throw the big one. <laughs> but then all the Palestinians will die too. This is the price we must pay to liberate them. As is the case in any operation, it is important to select an appropriate name, one that expresses the feelings of Muslims the world over. We should call this operation Death to the Jews. No, bad name. Why? If we call it that, how will people understand that all we want is peace? 